Dear students, in continuation to the online lectures as proposed by our university, I welcome you to attend this lecture of acoustics on the topic acoustical design principles and factors affecting it. So when it comes to design spaces like auditorium, open air theatres, cinema theatres, public lecture halls, radio broadcasting studios, law courts, conference rooms, etc. We should follow acoustical considerations. For this, the following three points must be well studied and taken care of. So the first point is requirements and conditions of good acoustics. The second is general principles and factors in acoustical design and the third and the last point is practical cases of some acoustical buildings. So let's discuss these considerations one by one in detail. Taking the first consideration which is requirements and conditions we will now try to understand them. So there are four requirements to meet the conditions of good acoustics. The first one is adequate intensity. Adequate intensity means that the sound should have sufficient intensity so that uh, there is optimum level of loudness in the hall. You might uh, recall intensity is directly proportional to loudness. This we have already covered while we were uh, discussing uh, acoustical defects. For this, the source intensity can be reinforced by providing reflectors near the speaker and diffusers in the hall. We will discuss the technique in detail in later stages of my lectures. The second point is even distribution of sound even distribution of sound is necessary to allow each and every audience hear the sound comfortably. This also means that the hall should be free from acoustical defects like sound foci, sound shadow or dead spots. For this, we should avoid concave surfaces like curved walls and domes in the ceiling. The third is intelligibility of the speech. Intelligibility of the speech means that every note in the hall is heard distinctly and clearly without mixing of noise or echo. We have studied in the lecture of acoustical defects that proper reverberation is the prime requirement for intelligibility of a speech. Now we can see Table 6. Here. So, this is the Table 6 from National Building Code 2006 of India, in which in its part 8, section 4, mentions the minimum and maximum reverberation time allowed. Say, for example, we can see in the second point music tech teaching rooms, the minimum allowed RT is 0.75 while the maximum goes to 1.25 which is for assembly halls. The last is no noise. So this is uh, last but not the least or rather of more significance noise reduction. So noise can be generated within the hall by various equipments, lighting fixtures, HVAC ducts, fans, footfalls, furnitures, etc. Or it can also enter the hall from outdoors like uh, noise of DG set, chillers or boilers, traffic, corridor or adjacent room. So this noise should be reduced 
either at the source preferably in case of indoor noise and should be sealed by making the hall airtight from outside noise so this is table 4 again from nbc 2016 same part section 4 it suggests the acceptable levels of noise in various buildings so for auditoria and concert halls the nbc allows noise level from 20 to 25 dbs decibels and it is then we have general principles and factors which we should consider in acoustical design of buildings so once we understand the basic requirements of good acoustics in building we can follow the general principles or we can say the factors of good acoustical design so we have these seven principles and uh, we will discuss them one by one so the first is site selection and site planning we have to design buildings like residences schools hospitals meditation centers etc which have silence or calmness as their prime demand so while planning such buildings we should understand the location of site and consider noise levels coming from roadways railway tracks airways nearby industry etc considering the noise the building can be oriented in such a way that it does not face the source of noise and can be provided proper offset generally traffic noise remains unaffected below 200 meters we can also provide a screen uh, between the building and the source of noise by planting green uh, belt or by providing earth bounds or wall screens while planting trees we should remember that every 100 feet wide belt as we can see in this figure so each 100 feet wide belt may reduce 5 to 8 decibels of noise and the tree should be evergreen as we can understand so as to ensure perennial noise uh, screening and earth mounds or walls with some height or the appropriate height can be effective for high frequency but uh, for low frequency of noise low frequency of noise means high wavelength of noise since uh, frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional uh, inversely proportional so the noise having high wavelength the noise undergoes easy diffraction as we can see in this image here and can reach the building by jumping the boundaries this way by following this path so this is uh, going to produce less effect but still we get sound shadow to a certain bit maybe this one then second is the volume so the volume of the room should be in proportion to the intensity of sound to be generated in it the volume of musical concert should be quite large so the sufficient space is made available for proper distribution of music on the other end for halls of speech like conference rooms classrooms um, etc the volume can be less as the sounds are comparatively weak but still in small rooms uh proper reverberation time should not be forgotten and uh, provision of required absorptive area is always preferred in planning volume height is the principle of great importance 
then either length or width. So this is the table that I have taken from Marshall Long's book, Architectural Acoustics. So this table can be referred for designing proper volume per seat. So here Mr. Marshall has mentioned the minimum, medium and the maximum volume per seat required for various typology of the spaces like rooms for speech, concert halls, opera houses, churches, etc. And the third is shape. So shape is the main governing factor in correcting the defects like echo, sound foci, dead spots, etc. Since we have already covered these defects in my classroom lectures, so you can well understand them. So for proper distribution of sound, it also plays an important role with volume. So we will discuss it in detail in later lectures when we will study the design of auditorium both in plan and section. But as we know, concave surfaces result in sound foci and dead spots. So curved walls, curved walls or the concave, concave walls and the domes should be avoided. As we can see in this figure, this is the elliptical shape in plan. It should be avoided and these concave shapes should be avoided. Fourth principle is the sound absorption. As already discussed, reverberation plays an important role in a speech intelligibility and quality of music. So interior surfaces should be provided with sufficient amount of absorptive material and calculating it with great care using the formula that we have studied in last lecture of acoustical defects. Since we have already gone through numericals based on uh, reverberation time and absorptive area using Sabine's formula, we will not design it again, but we will see various types of absorptive materials for our purpose. So there are mainly four type of absorptive materials that we generally use for acoustical purpose. These four types being first is the porous absorbents, second resonant panel absorbents, third is the cavity resonators. These cavity resonators are also known as Hemholtz resonators named after the scientist Hemholtz. And the fourth are the composite type absorbents. So porous absorbents are the soft materials which have got large pores or the holes and these holes are interconnected with each other so they have interconnected channels. And the sound waves when enter these pores they get dissipated by the viscosity of air and friction against the poles of the channels and hence the sound once enters these porous materials dies out. So we can see here the examples like rock wool, glass wool, wood wool. These are the examples of porous absorbents, foam plastic, asbestos fiber. Asbestos uh, fiber sheets are now banned as asbestos uh, results in a disease called asbestosis. So during manufacturing, the workers suffer from this disease and hence it is banned now. Then we have spray felts, then heavy folds of curtains. 
they have got good acoustical properties then we have soft fiber boards perforated boards so these perforated boards can have various types of perforations they can uh, have various various shapes of perforations maybe square shapes maybe hexagonal shapes octagonal or maybe circular shapes and these perforations can be uniform or they can be random so when these perforations are, are uniform these boards are used to absorb a particular type of frequency and if we want to have a range of frequency to be absorbed by the so this is the animation where we can see this is a hole of a porous material so this is a pore in porous material that we can hypothesize the pore has been zoomed so when sound strikes this pore it undergoes multiple reflections and in every striking in every collision with this pore sound loses some of its energy and hence ultimately it dies out then we have resonant panel absorbance so as the name suggests in this animation you can see this blue color is the sound and this is the uh, resonant panel absorbent so when uh, sound strikes so this is the wall in red color we can see resonant panel in dark yellow color and between the wall and the panel there is ear gap now when sound strikes this panel the panel being resilient in nature sets in vibrations and these vibrations are then transferred into the ear gap between the panel and the wall so damping takes place in this ear and this damping results in absorption or we can say in killing the noise so by the effect of ear damping sound dies out third are the cavity resonators or the hem holds resonators so these resonators are made of uh, hollow spheres so this hollow portion of the sphere is known as chamber and this hollow sphere has a very small opening the sound enters through this opening and it transfers its energy to the air present in this chamber so compression of air takes place like there is a mass and when force is applied on this mass the spring sets into compression the same thing occurs here also so when sound enters it there is compression in air and the sound energy dies out or we can say is transferred in overcoming the friction between the air molecules or is transferred into heat energy so these type of uh, resonators are suitable to absorb a particular type of frequency generally uh, frequency of ac plants or the individual machines since the opening is small so these resonators are well suited to absorb high frequencies high frequencies will have lesser wavelength so higher frequencies like the frequency like the sound of a flute like very shrill sound so these type of sounds can be well absorbed by these cavity resonators then we have composite type resonators as the name suggests this composite type absorbents is the combination of our three com um, absorbents so in this in this image we can see a solid wall in red color <clears throat> then we can say see a perforated board and this perforated board 
is fixed with the wall having some air gap and between this air gap some sound absorbing material like glass wool mineral wool or wood wool can be filled even cotton quilt can be used so sound when it strikes the perforated board it gets transferred back through these holes and reaches this sound absorbing material where the sound is absorbed so these perforations should be more than 10% nowadays there are perforated boards available which have got 17% to 22% perforations then we have treatment of interior surfaces which is the fifth principle so along with the overall shape and size of the auditorium the treatment of interior surfaces that is ceiling and side walls also play an influential part in the acoustical design the ceilings and the side walls should provide favorable reflections and reinforce the sound that reaches the rear parts of a large auditorium in this image here we can see in this image we see considerable height of the ceiling this section so points 1 2 3 and 4 we'll discuss them one by one so we can see at point 1 there is direct sound coming from this speaker to here and then there is a reflected sound which reaches which reaches the listener after being reflected from the rear wall so the sound has considerable time lag due to this two notes will be heard clearly and will create echo here while at point 2 the long delayed reflections may create echo and the sound may not be heard properly so this is the sound that would reach the listener after reflection and then there would be a direct sound point 3 lies in sound shadow as we can see there is a projected balcony so the listener sitting at this point will hear only one sound but not this reflected sound so this point or the rear seats will lie in sound shadow and then we have point 4 where we can see a concave ceiling so all the sound waves after reflection will converge at this point and it will create sound focus or the sound foci due to concave ceiling at the rear part of the hall while as can be seen at point 5 here since reflected sound waves reach simultaneously from opposite walls from this wall and from this wall the listener will feel flutter echo which also happens when walls are parallel so if these walls were parallel then also the same effect would have been happened so the ceiling height should be designed with great care hence we may refer these two equations this equation is for dimensions fit and this equation r1 plus r2 minus d upon 0.34 this value 0.34 comes from the velocity of sound in air which is 340 meter per second so <clears throat> these equations can be referred for time lag between reflected sound and direct sound does not create any defect then we have reverberation this reverberation and reverberation time has already been discussed a lot in classrooms so we all know that optimum reverberation is the most important consideration of good acoustics for speeches lectures conversation etc we require less reverberation time here i would again like to refer this table 6 of nbc national building code of india nbc 2016 so here 
we can see this reservation time is 0 0.75 for music teaching rooms for classroom it is 0 0.6 when there is uh, full occupancy and for empty room this is 1.1 so we can refer these tables and we can calculate the reservation time using the Sabine's formula which is 0.16 V upon A where we all know that A is the summation of absorptive area into its coefficients. So there may be I number of absorptive materials having I number of absorbed coefficients. We should multiply those coefficients with the area, add all those area to get the capital A and then we can calculate the reservation time or vice versa. If we know the reservation time, we know the volume of the hall, 0.16 being the constant, we can calculate the area of the absorptive material. So here I would also like to refer this table from the book Building Construction by S.P. Bindra and S.P. Rena, where Mr. Bindra has have has mentioned reservation time along with their occupancy level for various typologies for various typologies of buildings so last is the seats and their arrangements so in auditoriums lecture halls or cinema theaters these spaces have not only acoustical considerations, but uh, visibility of the audience is also of primary value. So the settings should either be staggered or have unobstructed passage for sound and vision. So this unobstructed passage can be designed in section, can be designed in plan by staggering the layout in plan or by giving sufficient height to the seats in section. For acoustics, the seats should have proper absorption and aisles width to ensure proper reverberation time and no sound shadow because the seats would lie one behind the other. So the second, the person sitting in the rear second row just behind the first seat should not lie in sound shadow. These were the principles that we have to take care of while designing good acoustical buildings. For further readings, you may refer the following. NBC Code 2016, Architectural Acoustics by Marshall Long, Building Construction by S.P. Bindra and Rena. And these are the some links that you may find on internet.